Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on July 29th, 2020. Six o'clock here at the, our municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. Um, the dial-in number is 312-626-6242. Nine nine. The meeting ID is nine one one six zero four one five eight zero, and the password is five seven zero zero one two. If you want me to repeat that, just call us and we will repeat that. I'm calling the meeting to order. We have a small uh, business home permit. Uh, public hearing. Is there, are they here, Dick? Wait, here, yeah. Okay, then we'll go on to select board announcements. Uh, I just want to say that the 350th anniversary committee had a, a wonderful meeting on Monday and we are meeting monthly, the last Monday of the month. If anyone is interested, please contact our select board office or email us and let us know so we can um, appoint you to the um, committees. Uh, is there any other select board uh, yeah, announcements? I can go over um, a couple things. We were, sure. um, so exciting news is the clarifier project at the sewer plant has started. So cool. um, the crew arrived today, the crane arrives tomorrow morning around 7.30. Um, so they were there today tearing down the old clarifier. Oh, I um, forgot the and uh, so, and of course, DEP uh, is coming around to make sure, you know, they do their yearly kind of what's going on with us. Um, so there's a memorandum that went out today to, to DEP and copied to us. And it, it just talked about the different things that we're working on. And I'll just read this so everybody has a, you know, just an update of where, we at, where we're at now, where we're going. So. Um, this is the status of the wastewater systems planning and implement implementation for the town of Deerfield. As requested to your planned visit on July 30th, 2020, and on behalf of the town of Deerfield, following is an overview of work which is currently active and or plan in the planning stages for the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant, Old Deerfield uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant, and the town collection system. Uh, for the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant, um, NPDES permitted, this is the capacity of the plant, is um, uh, 0 0.850 million gallons uh, a day, so just under a million gallons a day. Um, the secondary clarifier mechanism identified for replacement December 2017 is, in, is currently being replaced. Uh, the completion should be the fall of this year. And so again, the, the uh, the crews arrived today. They started work tearing down the clarifier. The, um, the equipment is coming, uh, should be in a, a week or so. The equipment will be here, the new clarifier, which would be great. The crane arrives tomorrow to start pulling the stuff out. So that's really exciting that we can get it done before it gets cold. I think we're, we're on schedule there, which is really great. Um, so uh, then phase one upgrades, this was funded by USDA, um, are currently in the design phase. They're probably around 50% design at the moment. Um, the upgrades includes a headworks improvement, um, which is a quarter inch mechanical screening system with washer compactor, new vortex grit capture and pumping processing system, uh, improvement to the biological systems, including a new uh, additional secondary clarifier. So we're not only fixing the one we have, we're actually gonna have a secondary um, for issues like this. Um, upgrading our UV uh, disinfectant, so going away from chlorine um, to, a, to a UV disinfectant. Um, ancillary improvements, so building modifications, electrical improvements, uh, new emergency generator. Um, so phase one design phase through early 21, and then construction should be completed by June of 2023. Uh, phase two upgrades are currently in the planning phase and a plan to address additional needs at the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant include aeration systems improvements, um, solids handling improvements, um, plant water systems improvements, building modification, site paving. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that um, today too. 
And then uh, phase two funding applications anticipated in 2020 and 2021. Um, so the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant, this is permitted about a quarter of a million gallons, million gallons to a day. Um, currently in the planning phase, possible upgrades include headworks improvement, new fine screening and influent pumping system replacement, aeration upgrades, new distribution box and aeration system structural repairs, a new 30 foot diameter secondary clarifiers, um, UV disinfectant, solid handling improvements, upgrade thickening sludge storage tank, ancillary improvements, you know, new plant water system, HVAC upgrades, building improvements, electrical upgrades, uh, new emergency generator and site paving. So all of that is a ton of work or uh, the plant is all, the town is also exploring a regional alternative, which would include decommissioning the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant and uh, pumping flows to the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant when that is upgraded um, the treat, the, for treatment and disposal or exploring regional partnerships with the city of Greenfield. Um, an additional study is planned for 2021. Um, the collection system, which is all the pipes and everything, phase one and two of the I and I study completed in 2018 and 2019, including collection systems, flow monitoring, manhole inspections, and sonar testing. That's done. Um, the CMOM program and asset management database, this is kind of more DOT, you know, jungle uh, jargon, um, but it really is just has to do with the whole database of the whole system, the study. So these were all developed as a result of the phase one and phase two I and I study. The town is currently in year one of its multi-year um, asset management program, which includes CT, uh, CCTV of the entire collection systems, which is the cameras. So right now we have cameras going, going out throughout the whole um, collection system to see what kind of condition the sites, you know, all the pipes are in, uh, tributary to both the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant and Old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant. Um, the town plans to implement improvements to the collection system, including rehabilitation and replacement where necessary of manholes and gravity sewer mains upon completion of the year one program. Uh, the program, the overall program is anticipated for the next 10 to 15 years um, pending funding availability. So there's a lot there, but that's kind of where we are a snapshot in time right now. And we have to discuss a bit about phase two and should we go after USDA funding now? And so that cost, you know, 10 to 15,000 bucks, I guess, to put an application together. I think it's worth it because, you know, with possible change in administration and money towards job infrastructure. I think you're going to see an infrastructure bill either in the next, you know, next time uh, we have a new administration or this one once they have done no infrastructure at all for years. So um, um, I agree. Uh, we need to be ready to shovel ready. So if we did uh, put money for the application, a USDA application, mm -hmm. what we would want I mean, it's similar information. So it would be collecting the information so we could fill out any mm -hmm. application. Right. I and mean, that would be part of what we would be paying for, mm -hmm. I would hope, so that we can be flexible. And as soon as the infrastructure, I'm sure there is going to be one. I know there is going to be one if Biden mm -hmm. wins. Um, he already said he was going to do it. So we need to have, we need to be ready for this. So. Um, uh, we 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 need to figure out that which should be one of so the, the things on the, on our September exactly town so that's what I was that, saying that we would want fifteen thousand dollars we need to get an actual quote right so that we can get them on board to do that for I you talked know, to at Dave the end about of the year yeah. yeah and so we we think that's important to do and that um, you know I wanted to talk to to Brenda about the you know sewer reserves and and when we we set our rates in the fall. We just want to make sure that we're covering that cost and make sure we have that money right. ready. The town did approve the 19 million. We're only spending the first 11.4 on the phase one, but we have to get going on phase two as well. There will be a phase three, which is a pipe out to the river and that resiliency work, which I think we can get grant funding. That, on that will be covered in an MVP. We hope. Or, or something, mm -hmm. one, one of the resilience. But that's not in one and two, just right. so people are clear. That's additional yeah. work that we want to do we there. Need, again, we need to make sure we have a, a rough estimate of the engineering so mm -hmm. it can appear to be shovel ready. Mm -hmm. 
and we can put it in because uh, there will be a program. There will oh, yeah. be a program for climate change and there will be a program for infrastructure. So We've, you know, with this camera work and then just it's summertime, so, you know, horrible language, but, but Kevin's been knee deep. Yesterday he was waist deep in sewage because back up sewage, you know, piling out of these pipes that are so old. I mean, literally waist deep in this stuff all day in 100, heat, 100 degree heat yesterday. The, the stuff is falling apart. It hasn't been addressed for years. Um, so we're I, seeing I this that. stuff. You we're seeing, oh yeah, Plastic milk jugs milk. plugging up a hole. And I mean, it's unbelievable, it's you know, how this system is. And um, so it's time, it's time to do all that stuff. So anyway, so I just want to update. I've got other things, but we have, we have a hearing. So yes. welcome. Yes, thank you very much for coming in. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves and I will read Open the, the yeah. yeah, I gotta find the hearing notice. Oh, here it is. It's in the um, pack, Carolyn. Yeah, I got it right here. Um, the Bur uh, Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to zoning bylaw chapter 2242, section 4650, as filed by uh, Robin L. LaFleur for a home business salon at uh, 68, at 68 Lee Road. The hearing will be held on July 29, 2020 at 6.15 p.m. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A section 20. Audience login URL is uh, zoom.us slash forward slash J forward slash 9116041580. The dial in number is 312626600. Or the one that's a New York one is 929-205-6099. That will give you the clearest, if you're dialing in, that will give you the clearest number. The meeting, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Okay. Introduce yourselves okay. and we will. Wait, one oh. sec. Um, says, what, wait, what did you say, can Casey? You... Or... Oh, add the password for the meeting, please. Oh, the password. Is... is it the same password? Yeah. Five, okay, yeah. same password is 570012. Oh my gosh. Now we got all that out of the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much. <laughs> I know. I'm not so sure. fun. <laughs> All right. So, thank you both. So, um, Robin, why don't you introduce yourself? And I am husband. Robin Lafleur. This is my husband, James Lafleur. Hello. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Good. Why don't you tell us about your operation? We have a packet here, um, but just for our home audience. Um, what should I say? I've so, what do you? I've owned a salon in Northampton for thirty-eight years and looking to come back to Deerfield. My mom is senior, lives with us, having some difficulty, thinking I maybe should be around a little bit more for her. Gonna kind of be semi-retired. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm looking so to do, work from home. you mentioned that um, there are no walk-ins. It's really your longtime customers. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing that we're always, um, from a home business point of view, so you anticipate low traffic. Yeah, I probably, I don't know. That road is pretty. Four or five people maybe yeah. in a day. At best, four or five people a day. And that's that not every day. Mm. Right. Not every day. It's currently um, only four days a week, pretty much. Okay. okay. And uh, with COVID, the only thing I would suggest is um, uh, your appointment book, just make sure you have all the contact information in case there's Absolutely, we do in. that now, yeah. She has you have to wear a mask. Yes. The law, the state is requiring it, so she's yeah. been doing it since they reopened. 
There yeah. was also discussion of a holding tank for some of the dying. Yeah, I talked to Mr. Kalachesky. Oh, good. And I talked to the building inspector about it, and we would have to put in a, uh, a holding tank. Uh, okay. Which would uh, hold, it couldn't go into our septic system. Right. Which we don't have an issue with. Perfect. And then it would be pumped by somebody like uh, Greg's or yep. uh, Bosley. Great. So whenever it gets to the level that it needs to be. Yeah. And we're prepared to do that. Okay, great. That's perfect. Yep. I don't have any questions. Does anybody? Dave, oh. did you have no, any? No, I don't have any concerns. Um, you know, it's, it's we have like plenty it's of parking. And, yeah. Plenty of parking in our yep. driveway. Yeah. yeah. It's quite it's long. And, um, is there any questions from anyone that's called in? Audience questions? No. Um, hearing none. None from the chat. Oh, okay. hello. None from the chat? Okay, thank you. Oh. Great. I just you never it. know. Yeah. I didn't hear quite hear it. Uh, okay. Um, uh, hearing, hearing no um, Make a motion to close yet. the hearing. Make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfram. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Um, now entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the, the home business um, pursuant to, you know, the, the regulations. He's going to put in the holding tank and follow all the COVID, you know, concerns. And yeah, I'm good. Uh, Dave Wolfram, I'll second it. Um, um, uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Great. Thank you. That was easy. See, yes. The introduction was longer than the meeting. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens now? Uh, you wish you a permit to us or how? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, our, our, yeah. our office is closed because of potential COVID uh, exposure. So um, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Tracy, uh, Casey, what um, are you and Jen? Um, what's the next steps for uh, Robin? We can pass this along to Pat and have her issue the license. Okay, great. Okay. So. And how would they pick it up? Are you just going to mail it then? We can mail it to them, yeah. or we can leave it. Well, I would say we should mail it to them, and we may have to get some help from another office to get it out the door. Excuse yeah. Me? Because it's my first select board hearing um, with the town. Do you write a decision in just the, um, the permit? No. Just Not for this one. Okay. Since we have we have a form that we use for home business permits, so we have to follow the hearing process. But the form itself is in the database. Okay, great. So we'll, yeah, we'll mail it out and to you. And then I'll contact Dick. So we can mail it out. Get the uh, what they're, he's going to require for them plus the, for the holding tank. And then yeah, and yeah, he'd work with you on that for sure yeah. and yeah. help you yeah, get that expected. Then everything yep. should be okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you very well, it'd be much. Nice thank closer you. to home now. Yeah, it'd be awesome. <laughs> We'd love to have Good. you here. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> so, it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Remember me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know with the masks on, it's hard oh, to see everybody. Right? Recognize anybody with me. I know. I know. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> thank you so much. Have, have a good night. Oh, oh, careful. Yep. Clappy. Okay. Bye. 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 Clapping. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got that out. What's going on in the peanut gallery there? Was that okay? We're clapping for you. Oh, this yeah. Is clapping. This is clapping. <laughs> so this did this work okay? Did uh, we get checked off on this? So far, good. We'll have to see if we have any complaints. Yeah, the complaints. I think it went fine. I think I've got a couple. Uh, <laughs> so you if do? We, yeah, I do. Uh, well, for some reason, when I go on and pull up through the calendar of the website, that URL is not mm -hmm. a hyperlink, and you can't very well copy it on a Chromebook. I don't know how, but anyways, if we had that and the password printed, I don't know if that's allowed, but so everyone had everything in one shot. Well, honestly, I think what happened was is that I started it with a waiting room and then I decided, oh, we'll just give a password, but then it changes every one that I booked. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's, Welcome to onboarding the system. Yeah, we're yeah. figuring this out. We were doing it yesterday. Well, just, just to make it all one-stop shop, mm -hmm. everybody's got every possible thing they need, you know, right. when we get there. Right. But okay. And it was, it, I, now I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know what went wrong. I just texted Casey and I was like, I know what happened. I yeah. <laughs> okay. Sounds because good. Because what happened, 
with the waiting room, I literally have to, if somebody gets booted off or goes off and then comes back, you if let I them don't all in. notice that the waiting room, I have to let right. them in. So I would rather let everybody in. Right, right. Yep, okay. exactly. Oh, I see Anna Lee. Okay. Yep. Um, Trevor, do you want yep. to, uh, moving yep. on? Moving on. Can I finish on a couple oh, things? Oh, I was going to ask you just to do yeah. an update to the school opening, but yes, go Yes, that well, first. just a couple things. So, um, I was hitting on this. So, uh, the town common ad hoc committee met, uh, with, um, Berkshire Design Group, Jeff, uh, I think it's is his last name. Um, he... They, they've been working on the Frontier track and really enjoyed, you know, working with them there. And I thought, you know, we really want to get the common going. And I thought it'd be a great idea yeah. to just have somebody help us do that process. So um, we interviewed him. We brought him all of the previous designs that we've done and meeting notes. And we met at the common, talked about what we wanted to have. So we received the proposal from Berkshire Design Group to help us through the process of, um, you know, designing what we want on the common. And, and then I think eventually we're gonna need to broaden that out a bit to the other town, you know, the other parts of, of the downtown, but this is really focused on the common. So um, there's a proposal that, you know, I'll, I'll send a case and it'll be available for people to, to review um, what we were looking to do. I just wanted to bring this to you because we're gonna have a meeting, I think next week, um, the town common committee and they have not seen, I mean, I sent this out, but they have not, we haven't discussed it at all. So I just wanted to get it, get it to you all. Um, there's, you know, if we wanted to move ahead fa fairly quick, there's a survey and base plan that would be done in, you know, between August 10th and the 14th, the schematic design before September 11th, um, design development, you know, before October 2nd, there's construction documents and then bidding, um, then there's oversight. So there's all different steps that they will take us through and we and they split this bid into two options So we could just do the design part and then when funding becomes available We can pick it back up with the construction documents and all of that um, But there's a good explanation of what what we've you yeah. know what what they would produce and not and I just I guess the um, the design work is about 22,750 the construction documents and uh, construction observation is about 8200 bucks so okay. we so could look at then, other don't we have enough money set aside we have yeah we have enough to do this there's yeah that's not we have so, more than enough to do this uh, but i just you know if anybody wanted to look fit, at others yes. but how does this fit into the um timeline that we had for um the grant cycles for uh we have no grant for the common so none we could go and get a grant. I think there, I would imagine, so there are a couple of things I was looking at with CPA funds, because yeah. it's, you know, can certainly right. be used for that. Um, but there's gotta be, I, I wanted to research other grant opportunities, if there's anything else by the state to do with, you know, recreational well, space. A, I was just know. gonna say there's park stuff, but right. if we're improving it, and we're improving access, which right. is hugely Oh, important. absolutely. And you're ADA accessibility, yeah. all right. of that. You're doing all that. Um, that would be eligible. And, and, and I would think. Yeah. And so the idea is a, maybe they could, you know, or, or get some help to figure out how to go get a grant for that. Uh, well, I I need that some would be help part of, um, I mean, you've got to have a plan so that you can right. apply. Exactly. And, then, and that would, if you could get them to fill out the application for small money, Addition, yeah, we could add on. If then, we, then I think we should push this through because I mean, yeah. people want to. We just I we just need wanna, to get this done. Number one for the three hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay. We've got to clean up this and town and just get started on. And this that's stuff. Casey. I want you to make sure you follow up on the the Cumberland Farms. Yeah. Remember the change of, that mm -hmm. uh, October first yep. is the they run out of time. So we need to keep yep. following up on them. Yeah. Um, um, so, you know, it's there for people to review. We'll review it at, at the, our committee, you know, next week. Yeah, um, okay. Let, let's try to, yeah. Dave, is that all right with you? If we yeah. start putting this together? For yeah. And then we'd come back for approval if you wanted to go yeah. ahead with this well, stuff. Well, what just we want to do is if we, could, if we could move this ahead a little bit, 
we can uh, present it to the um, capital improvement committee. Yep. Um, and maybe have be ready for a September meeting. Yeah, they said uh, they put an overall budget of like three hundred to four hundred thousand for the whole thing. And of course, this is just pie in the sky because we have no idea right now. But that you know, just based on the understanding of our discussion, what we're looking at, that's the overall scope of the project. But uh, I think those park, I think those park. Uh, Usually they're like 400. Well, they're, they're up to 400. Yeah, so we so, could. So you could I know we're working on another one for up at the yeah, other end Yeah, but it doesn't town, matter because it's a different round. It is. It's, it's a different round. So yep. you can uh, apply different rounds. So, so yeah, I thought it was worth moving forward with. And yeah, it seemed like a great Let's, let's try to do firm. that. Okay. Great. Are they um, doing any work on the Leary lot at the same time? I'm trying to well, talk. so that's a great question. So we had Ty and Bond do the initial design for, through the MVP stuff for, I think, I don't know how much they did of the complete streets and the other thing, but I wouldn't mind tying these guys into looking at that. I gave them that, that work anyway, so that they could see the original business uh, business association plan from the 90s or late 80s, 90s, that took you know a park from Leary Lot onto the Common and closing Park Street. It was beautiful. Love to get there eventually, but we're going to have you know Leary Lot's mainly parking lot with some pocket parks. But I'd like to have them look at that and see is there anything we can improve on that design. It was kind of a quick design because it was MVP and we had to get it done fast. But uh, Casey, when when do we hear about the MVP? I don't know actually when we're going to hear about the MVP. Most of the grant awards are slowed down by at least two weeks to a month. We haven't yeah. even gotten green communities back yet. Okay. okay. Well, we got we some should, time, but just we did put it in. So I would say we did. I would say that by another another month we should know. Mm -hmm. And then that would be also we should probably know by the end of August. I would hope. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I think. Then within a month. And that would be in time for the September town meeting as well, because mm -hmm. we'd have to um, formally appropriate our match. But that would give us, um, I mean, I'm hoping that we can do the Leary lot to help Berkshire Brew with, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, because the COVID stuff's not going away for a while. Oh, it's going to be and a couple years. We need, we need to make a more permanent solution for some of our businesses. So getting the Leary lot fixed up and having more outdoor opportunities for our businesses downtown, I think it's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. And there are yeah. some business and maybe then we can apply. If we hear that we're successful, then we can move ahead with that and then apply for some of the de economic development grants that allow businesses to get recoup with the costs of, you know, like moving outdoors a little bit mm -hmm. and stuff. Because we, we, we had no takers on that. No, I did talk to right. uh, to a couple of restaurants downtown, and they were interested. They talked about, well, you know, I talked to Dick. Well, maybe setting up some seating on the common for people to, you know, come over and eat there. Um, you know, but I don't know who purchases tables, that kind of thing. It's, it gets kind of wishy-washy when it's on town property versus just, you know, maybe mm -hmm. in the parking lot in front of their space, like blocking off the spot. So I don't know. It takes a lot of work. You know, there's only so much time as a select board member you have. You know, you need public to kind of take the lead on this stuff. I can only, I'm stretched thin as it is. So. Uh, all of us are. We're we spending are. 50, 60 hours a week. And, and our staff is too. I mean, we're trying yeah, to deal with all this other stuff, so it's really hard to take on a bunch of things. But this we've been working on for a long time. I'd really love to just focus on getting that going and tie it into that Leary lot if we can. And yeah. Think long term about, you know, don't design something that's going to have to get ripped up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that. Um, did, did you want an update on school well, opening? Well, yes. I wanted. Um, well, we we've met uh, with Deerfield Academy and Eagle Brook. We're working on their reopening plans. They're very responsible. Mm -hmm. Been very uh, cooperative, um, and we're still working on them. So, but I They've thought great. people you should hear about the school reopening mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, how that's going because Darius has been fabulous. He's been great. The whole yeah, administration. The frontier's there. delayed what ten days, so it's yeah, going to be September thirteenth. Huh? Yeah. yeah, all the schools, um, and that was to give teachers um, some uh, professional development time to kind of get used to teaching in this new environment and the processes that they would have. Um, so the 
the plans that we've been working on, we had to get three to the state. One would be a full everybody back, probably not gonna happen. The other would be a full remote, which may have to happen. Um, the other was a hybrid, which was gonna come in a little bit at a time. You know, half the kids come one time, half the kids come the other, and kind of space out everything, do as much outside as you can. Um, and then we were leaving Wednesdays in the beginning few weeks open for professional development so the teachers could figure what did they do right, what did they do wrong. Now that they've negotiated with the state to get 10 days ahead of time, we may not have to do that much professional development those few weeks. So there may be some change to that schedule a bit, you know, so I think they're going to have, the teacher will be able to come back and have no kids there for 10 days to figure out how they're going to do this. Um, we've been, you know, and, and then I think they're still going to need a few days even into the year as they, they kind of reassess, okay, now that the kids are here, we better adjust this and adjust that. So there'll be a few professional development days, but there will be some time for, um, you know, to, to address getting the kids back in and understanding how this is working. It's, it's not ideal. It's not ideal for families. It's not ideal for the teachers, the kids, but we have to start somewhere, I feel. I think, you know, personally, we have to vote on this next week. Um, we're gonna see about that. We still are trying to get, um, I know you're working through MAPCO on trying to get some indicators of, so, so you had an outbreak, when do you shut down? When do you well, open back up again? Just, just to understand, um, there's reopening criteria and closing criteria, and it's depending on the percentage of um, community spread. Well, for us, we've had, you know, really, we've been wonderfully safe, and we have not had truly community spread. It's in the community, uh, but we mostly, uh, most of our cases in the early part of the pandemic have been healthcare workers, mm -hmm. and then only recently have we had community members and um but we're still you know we're like 14 cases so it's not like we're rampant or anything like that and that's over the period of six months so um we have to come up with a different criteria so next tuesday is another mapco meeting we meet bi-weekly now instead of weekly um and so we're going to work i, I co-chair that and so we're putting on the agenda uh, um discussion to come up with criteria that everyone in the county will agree to so this is not going to be like a snow day thing that oh you know you know so and so's closing so we'll all close this is going to be solid That's reasonable cool. yeah um safety issues that we're going to discuss and we're going to figure out um something that works for us as in our rural more rural communities that mm -hmm. are luckily in in a bubble so, about the best place you can live yeah in the country i mean right now. we're we're <laughs> the safest so yeah. and we want to keep it that way so yeah. we want to protect you know students and, and faculty you know administration so it's tricky there, there will be no perfect answer people will be upset one way or the other just the way it goes this is, this is probably the hardest decision that we'll make as a board of health and uh and school committee will make administration will make and we'll have to look back at it. I mean, eventually, you know, if something's not working right, we'll change it, but mm -hmm. you have um, to start I'm, somewhere. I'm, it's never, if it's a safety issue, we're 100% we're on top of it and, mm -hmm. and we, we're very flexible. So if we have made a decision that it doesn't look like it's working out, we're gonna immediately change. We will. But yeah. if, if people wear masks, seriously wear masks, and they are unpleasant, but you know, they this work. is a new ra reality, and this is really where most of your transmission is happening. So please wear a mask for yourself and others. If you watch your social distancing, you know, try to stay as far apart as you can, you know, comfortably. And also um, wash your hands and wipe down surfaces and stuff. Then those actions will allow us to um, support safe reopening and we'll keep the schools open. Mm -hmm. So it's our actions collectively. So collectively, if everyone does this, we will be okay. Right. And so it's very important not to let up. I know everybody is sick and tired and that the highlight of your life is, you know, going to the dump or something. I mean, <laughs> transfer station. This is, it's tough. There's yeah. no question. That's so, a highlight uh, of my weekend. Yeah, <laughs> but we got, we got, we got to cope. Much. You know, it's gonna be another six months at least. 
Yeah, um, if we're lucky, we will have a vaccine sometime in, um, you know, later winter. I, um, we're meeting as an EDS group. We ha we're meeting weekly, now we're bi-weekly. We have some planning meetings. So again, October, uh, September 30th the, at the Senior Center, when you drive through and pick up your food, you can get your shots. That's where you can get the super duper, uh, you know, the high strength flu shot or a regular flu shot. It's up to you. And, and um, we'll be sending out the forms pre-register, but you can do that at the Senior Center. That's September 30th. October 4th at the Deerfield Highway Garage, we are going to set it up like we would have to run a COVID um, clinic, you know, um, drive through in the winter. So you're gonna see us practicing what we need to set up to provide you all with um, COVID vaccine when it was really, when it's really cold. So um, help us by, if you're interested in volunteering, there's gonna be plenty of jobs. Uh, we we are, help. we will have um, help. We have good volunteers, but we need more volunteers, especially uh, we want people to be, um, have the opportunity to understand what we're doing. Uh, we haven't run an EDS, uh, our EDS we did for eight years in a row, but we haven't done it for six years. So, cause we have not had free vaccine. So what we need to do is practice the flu. So come get your flu shot and help us practice. But also if you are interested, come and volunteer, you'll get your COVID shot first. And yep. uh, I mean, there is some advantages of volunteering. And also, um, you're going to ha have a, an idea of how we're going to run this um, and help us uh, w work out all the kinks so that we can do this. Um, please send your information to our uh, select board office if you're interested. And also, uh, Dave's wife, Mary, is, is organizing, help organizing the volunteers as well. So we'll be working on this for, you know, the next few weeks. But mm -hmm. if you're interested in helping, please, please step forward. Yeah. We definitely need the help for sure. Get healthcare workers, anybody that wants to, you know, nurses. There's plenty of non-medical jobs, yeah. but if, if you, you if you have do it, have a you... nursing license and you don't mind giving shots, that would be very be helpful. huge help. <laughs> huge help. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, Dave, did you have any announcements or anything? It's just lovely to see you back, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That feels yeah. okay to be back. Good. Good. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's been a little bit longer haul than I had planned on but it's uh I'm glad you're feeling better yeah yeah so it's uh still got a couple four weeks before I'm really back to speed but yeah you know it's okay it's, you're here yeah thank you yeah um, so the uh, only other thing I want to kind of mention is the uh you know I just want to compliment Chief Paturik on the way he handles the Deerfield Police Department. Yes. Here, here. Yes. Um, you know, there's been a lot of things going around in the, about the police and everything, and it's just, you know, there's bad apples in every group. I don't care what group you're in. Um, but the, our chief has been very diligent. Uh, he has very good systems set up. Good training. Um, you know, Quite frankly, the, the, the thought process of defunding police departments is just a bunch of crap. Um, you know, it's just, if anything, you know, we have to look at re-educating our forces more. Mm -hmm. So it's putting more money into them instead of taking it away and making sure it's done the right way, you know. Um, you know, um, so. Actually, uh, Dave, I, John, I was going to have John come and talk about um, what's happening on the state level but um since the bill was uh, still in conference and it hasn't we haven't we don't really know the outcome yet um he's actually on the agenda for um august 12th yeah. mm -hmm. so thank you for bringing that up just so that people do know that um we we, we are concerned about this but um we, we are so lucky as dave mm -hmm. says to have um, a good police chief He's and been a amazing. Police department. Yeah, he's been amazing. It, it um, you know, we have a Deerfield inclusion group, um, and and um, you know, immediately reached out, got together. I've been on a meeting with him and um, and Jen Bartek, too. Sergeant Jen Bartek has been very involved in that, and um, 
you know, any, any rallies or, you know, demonstrations that he's been right on the ball and offering his services and, and the people uh, of his staff there to make sure that people are safe and welcome and understand that, you know, what they can do, what they can't do and how, how they can, you know, get volunteers to help direct traffic and all of that. So he's just been there nonstop on his day off, on his time off, you know, July 4th, everybody's enjoying their weekends. vacation and yep. he's here working. So, um, He's been doing a, a really good job, and he, and I think, um, you know, w as this as this <coughs> happens and people kind of want change, it, it's helpful to then, you know, first come get an ed education on what what a, what is the norm now, you know, you want to change. So okay, yeah. let's look at what our use of force is and the the proactive training that we do now, and everybody can always improve. And and I think he says. Right off the bat, we're always willing to improve and look at new ways to do things and um, and adjust. And so, um, definitely on the forefront of trying to make sure our our, our uh, part-time officers, full-time officers are trained and know what to do and how to de-escalate. You know, we don't do choke holes. All of that kind of thing that you know they're asking for is already. We're light, Massachusetts is light years ahead, and Deerfield, because of Chief Paturic, is yeah. way ahead on this. And you know, it's. I served for 14 years on the police department here in Deerfield, and look at the training I had here. And compared to what they do now, mm -hmm. it's light years ahead. Oh yeah, and it's just you know, yep, it's just amazing. It is, it is, and, uh, and I think what you know we require of police officers these days, what's expected of them. Yep. Um, it's just you know, it is uh, a lot on their shoulders. There is, and it's just you know, just like our teachers. You know, there's a lot on their shoulders. Yeah. They're, they're dealing with Well, everybody is issues. doing more social yeah. work. Yes. And, you know, actually I feel good for the teachers because most of these parents are going to have their kids home for quite a while, and they're thinking, okay, if this is the way they're behaving at home. Let's we'll start straightening them out before they get back to school. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last time anyone's going to vote down a school budget, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I don't think the school department's going to have any problems with their budgets. <laughs> no, no. Take the kids back. Please. Yeah. <laughs> no, no they, yeah, you're right. I'm glad you mentioned that because it's true. He, yes, he's been thank doing great. You. And he has been working with, with all those groups and trying to be out front and talking with them. So. Yep. Yes. Um, <coughs> we, we, he's been really the forefront of a lot of things. Uh, he also participates in a lot of <laughs> regional <laughs> groups, and that is very helpful. He represents us really where, mm -hmm. very well. Um, moving on, we have a consent agenda on the minutes. Um, did both of you have a chance? We didn't finish them. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I we didn't finish them. them. Okay. Good. Um, Welcome to COVID. <laughs> no, that's all right. I just didn't see them. So I'm like, did you see them? <laughs> okay. Um, discussion and decision items. Um, so, oh, Casey, this yes. is... Uh, this is I, we authorized the chair and Trevor. But we so want you wanted to do this again? again? Yep. Okay. So Let's how do you want us to clean it up? So I would make a motion to um, to approve. Well, if, if you still want to, to have me sign the warrants, and then the chair is always authorized to sign the warrants as an alternate or as I mean, I, I guess I would be the alternate, but. Um, but I, I've always felt the chair always has the right to sign the warrants, oh, yeah. and then we we have always. Yeah, but you have to specifically vote it. So we'll specifically vote that. So the chair always has the authorization. You do to have vote. to specifically vote it. So they authorized you in the last vote they took, Trevor. They authorized you to be the signatory, but we ran into a problem when we weren't able to get you here. So a secondary authorization would be perhaps to have the chair sign or to have the chair and the town administrator sign, however you guys want to handle it. No, I thought well, it was just a... Just have, a backup, the chair. have a backup mm. in case somebody can't get here. Yeah, but I, Casey, we voted the, the Trevor and the chair. So you just want us to... No, you it. didn't. I went back and I listened to it. It was just Trevor. Oh, was it? I could have sworn it was I just the chair. assumed yes. the chair always had the right. All right. Well, I thought any member yeah, of the well, board of selectmen could sign the warrant. We have to vote it. Anybody can. Yes. So how do we oh, want? Do we want to set that up that any any member, any yeah, one member can? Or yeah, or what, can, yeah, can we just say that? any one member? Because what if Trevor and I are not available and a Dave? Or what if I'm the only one available in Dave's chair? May I make a suggestion? 
Yes. Maybe. Um, have a twofold thing. Have two people be able to sign. Um, perhaps a member of the select board and the town administrator, or a member of the select board and the town accountant. Select board only. So you have two no, people looking at it. I kind of only want the select board too. Um, how about any member of the select board? Okay. As long as you vote it. Okay. Um, I make a motion that any Any member one member of the select board may sign. Trevor, in the event, Trevor um, volunteered that Trevor's not to available. Be, Did you want to phrase it like that? Well, Trevor volunteered to be the point person to make sure someone is always checking. But if he's not available, I would like to make the motion that it's any select board member at any point can be the one that signs. So we won't name Trevor. We won't name the chair. We just name anyone, one, any one of us. Is that okay? Yeah. I thought that's the way it always had been. I, I did too, actually. But no. then we, then we had re-voted it for Trevor and the chair. But I guess maybe we didn't make that clear. Because you weren't okay, moving on right. from chair. Right. No, and when I, I listened look. to it, because okay. I thought you did too, but when I listened to it, it just said Trevor. Okay, well, The vote fine. was specific to Trevor. So if you want to change that so that any one member of the select board can, I think you have to give a clarifier, though, as a secondary, because um, one of the reasons that they want the select, that the MGL requires the select board to review the, the warrants is to make sure that things are getting paid appropriately. Correct. Right, but that's why So Trevor, that's the reason you have to take a vote in the first place. Trevor volunteered to go through every single bill, and then if he's not available- Which he does. <laughs> which he does. But then any one of us can come in and look at it as well, but it's not necessary for us to sign it. But if Trevor's not available, any one of us should be able to fill in behind him and, and commit okay. to making sure that someone is looking through every single bill. Okay. So I'm going to say any member of the select board may review and sign the warrant if Trevor is not available. Perfect. As a motion. Well, is that good, or would you rather it's well, something else, or you just rather it because like, we can just. It, I, why do we have to say if Trevor's not available? Well, can we just say any? Well, because Trevor might. Because be you us. theoretically you should have a quorum signing it, unless you decide that it's okay. And so this is what I'm asking: Is it okay for any one member to sign yes. the warrant? That's yes. what I need to know. Yes, we decided that two or three years ago because. People, it was hard to track down all three of us sometimes in the summer. Or when somebody was sick, I don't know what it was. Somebody was not available, and then somebody was out of town, and it was like there was only one person. So I thought we decided that already. Well, let's, yeah, that, so we'll that take we voted the vote that any one member can sign. Maybe the chair would be the one to sign, and then any one member can sign? No, no, don't say chair, because you're the one that's, you no. volunteer, you already volunteered to to go through every single bill. Somebody should be looking at every single bill. Yeah. And well, and you have a town account that reviews every single bill before it even turns into a warrant. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> and but she, it she just is, is, she she is, is, she is wicked good. That's who I go to ask she is questions a to. <laughs> yes, she's wicked good, but yep. I kind of just want it to be any one of us. Trevor's volunteering, but we don't need to say that. He's just doing it for now. And he might get sick of it. Right, but you initially voted him. So if you want to change that, and let's clarify what, what this means. Because in, what I would say is any one member of the select board may review and sign the warrant if quorum of the select board isn't available. Maybe yeah, we do it fine. that way. That's fine. Oh, okay, that's fine. That, that works. All right. Yeah. Does that's it, good. Does that make sense? That's fine. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So I'll make a motion that any one member of the select board may so review and sign the warrants. Um, if, if a quorum is not available. Dave Wolfram, second. Um, uh, is there any further discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor uh, McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, okay. Casey, does that, is that clear enough? Okay. Right. That's clear, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, no, I really thought. She's smiling, she's have... happy now. No, no, it's fine. Good to have it laid out. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure that we're clear. <laughs> yep, no, that's good, I'm glad you did. Because it will be helpful in the treasurer's office. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I thought it was clear before. Um, next item on the agenda is a retirement um, a letter from um, Mike Phillips. 
He'd just like to take the opportunity to inform us that um, his retirement is effective at the end of the August 10th, 2020, end of the workday. He's been here for 37 years. Thank you. And um, we just want to appreciate how much um, that's a lot of snow plowing in the late, late nights. I just think about that, how, how many a lot of work. things he's done and yeah. seen and changes and um, support he's given to the residents of this town for 37 years. Um, that's, that's a long time. That's a wicked long time. You know, know, a lot like, you know, Harry Ruddick, all the years that he's yeah. given to our community. And I'm so grateful for, for yeah. all the work um, Mr. Phillips has done for, for, our, for his department and, and for all the residents and all the things that he's, you know, helped people with over the years has been great. So, so do, um, do we have a motion to accept his letter? Uh, yes, and make a motion to uh, recept, accept um, Mike Phillips' letter of retirement on the last, uh, the end of the day, the work, last working day is August 10th, 2020. And Dave Wolfram, second. Is there any further discussion? Just, we just want to make sure it's clear in the record that we appreciate um, all the years that Mike has worked for the town and Absolutely. all those terrible snowstorms, 37 winters of snowstorms. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, thank you, Mike. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel? Aye. Dave Wolfram? Aye. Carolyn Ness. Thank you so much, Mike. And uh, I'm I hoping wish you to a very restful retirement. Yeah. <laughs> a good time to retire, at least not. <laughs> the winter of We're another jealous. winter. Yeah, we are jealous. <laughs> another, another winter. Um, okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, um, Greenfield participation letter for um, the community block grant um, small business loans. Um, Casey, do you want to just give us an update on this? Yeah, so this was a grant that Greenfield went after on behalf of all the towns that wanted to participate. And Robin Fordham had sent an email about it. I forwarded it out. It was several weeks ago. But uh, then MJ Adams got in touch with me about it. She now works for Greenfield. Um, so I asked MJ for a letter, but I haven't heard back from her. And what this would allow us to do is pass on any grant amount um, availability to businesses that might, be, might need that. And we have two... If you look in the list, yep. I think it's the third page of that, yep. of that section. Um, you'll see that we had two, mm -hmm. I think we have two grant awards of up to $10,000. Yep. So I had asked MJ to send me the letter, participation letter, but she hasn't gotten back to me. So I'm wondering if the board would be willing to approve that letter and sign it have the chair sign it upon receipt. Should I make that motion? Dave Walton, second. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Thank you, Casey, for pursuing this for the COVID, um, uh, you know, and helping our Thank Robin. Business. Thank Robin and MJ. They did all the work. I'm just trying to facilitate. That's great. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. good. They did a lot of hard work. I think that's um, very kind of them to share. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, if there's any um, further discussion, I'll, um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Um, great. Uh, so um, maybe, how are you going to notify uh, people that, um, or businesses, that th they have the ability? Well, it's good. that's what I want to find out from uh, Robin and MJ, how they're handling it. Okay. So there's more information they're going to have to send out to us. Okay, because okay. there might there might be right. there might be additional there might be additional help too as well. Um, That's what we're waiting to see. Yeah. So make sure. Yeah, we have some way to notify. So people. what I would do is I would send this out um, online and maybe do see whether it it makes sense after I talk to Robin and MJ. Um, to see how they're going to notify their towns and maybe we'll follow their lead. Okay. Um, Great. So the next item on the agenda is to name uh, Casey as, or the town administrator as the ADA coordinator. Um, you I'm need sure one Kevin, more thing to do, don't you? Yeah, I'm sure Kevin's not. Oh, uh, totally. Kevin's just Kevin is happy crying in the corner that he's losing this yeah. job. <laughs> helpful. I got to say, he passes me more information than I necessarily need. 
Okay. No, it's good. He's probably seriously texting me and telling me to shut up, too. <laughs> so, right. thank you. I, I make that motion to appoint Casey as, um, or the town administrator as the ADA coordinator. Dave Wolfram, second. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Thank you, Casey. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And thank aye. you, Kevin, for doing it for so long. Yes, I and I, Carol and Ness. It's yes. unanimous. Yep. Um, contracts. Casey, what contracts do you have for us? This uh, traffic and So the only contract I have for you is the contract. I honestly don't know if I remember to get it out for you, but it's, the traffic it's in control. the office. So it's a contract to accept the the street light the street light collaborative work we do with MDOT. Yes, we've we got have that to maintain here. that our accesses are are appropriate, and we're maintaining those accesses as they cross street lights. Okay. Yep. Plus, we have the ability to change. Um, allow the ambulance to go through or the fire trucks to go through the police the, mm -hmm. the police officers to go through the lights with the clickers so there is a contract for that um i think it's in the office no right? we have it you have it out yeah. in the packet yep we're good yeah. oh, okay so, i did put it out like yeah had, traffic so control we, agreement yep. so we um ask you to uh i mean we're voting to have you authorized to sign it right yes town administrator signs and then the highway administrators uh I guess all okay. oh, the mass highway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, mass uh, highway. And then it looks like Casey, um, Lisa would sign, town solicitor. Yeah. I, I make a motion that we yeah. and approve. And she has a copy of it. Okay. Yeah. Good. I make a motion we approve the traffic control agreement and authorize K, uh, town administrator to sign for us. Second, Trevor McDaniel. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Uh, select board policies. What policies? We don't have any. Okay. Well, do you want to address Go these ahead. memorandums? Um, oh, that is not, those, uh, we're going to do those under, I'm not anticipated. Oh, okay. I'll wait today. then. Yep. Item on it. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is a letter of support for um, a small grant. Uh, the Franklin Conservation District has applied for. Um, if we get the MVP five round on he healthy soils, it will be used as a match towards um, our efforts to um, do a circuit rider. Uh, and our circuit rider grant is um, to go to farms and landowners and, and sign them up for programs and NRCS um, money programs. Uh, NRCS doesn't have enough staff to spend the money that's allocated to Massachusetts. So we're applying for a grant, which I hope we get. And that could be, um, we got a match from the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Districts, which I am president and, and I am you know, full disclosure chair of the conservation district. So that's how I knew about Good. our MVP program. So the idea is hopefully we're bringing more money back into the um, valley, um, you know, that will be conservation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, erosion control, buffers, um, no-till, that kind of stuff. And that's part of our healthy soils is encouraging no-till because carbon sequestration is, mm -hmm one of the big climate change fighters. So anyway, it's all related. And um, so I was hoping you would support this. So make this. a motion, yeah, to approve this letter of support. Or to sign the letter of support. Oh, to sign the letter of support. I'll second that, Dave Wolfram. Yeah. And, go ahead. Oh, well. So, um, you want to read it or? No, 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 I was just going to say that. Um, so we received that request back last week and had to have an emergency, they needed it in an emergency time yeah. frame. So, so just, if the motion could have a friendly amendment to be approved as of July 23rd, which absolutely. was Thursday when they needed it. So make that motion to approve as of July 23rd. Okay. If there's no further okay. discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor? Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Aye Dave Wolfram. Um, and I'm going to subst uh, abstain because um, I'm chair of the Conservation District and president of MACD, which... Okay. Also sent a match letter, so it just 
Yeah, it makes sense. Looks better if I know. I yep. signed it because I approve it, but I just. Yeah, no, that's fine. As long it makes as you sense. Know. We get a okay. form. Um, sewer abatements. We don't have any, do we, no. Casey? No. no. Um, we have mail. Um, speaking I, about the feasibility uh, studies, can I just ask you, Casey? Um, more, have you heard anything from the FERCOG on that technical assistance grant that they were supposed to be doing inventory of the culverts? culverts? No, I haven't. I know they did do, I know they were working on it, but I haven't asked Megan about that. Megan and I were spending a lot of our email time talking about the ADA work. So I will send Megan an email and ask her. Okay, okay. The, the reason why I want is because I I'm, I'm really want us to have our culverts organized and have a priority list of at least four or five culverts that we want replaced. Right. So if there's any kind of infrastructure project or uh, climate, um, you know, climate resiliency program or whatever we that we can apply. I want to make sure our culverts. We have culverts that are ready to go. I mean, and we have a couple things on River Road that we know are problematic, but mm -hmm. you know there are some problematic places down here in well, South Deerfield. I we have the ones in the old Deerfield and uh, Deerfield along the Deerfield River that I got done under the Irene kind of grants, but. We have we haven't done the ones down here, There's and we haven't finished River Road. Well, I just I stuck in. Uh, Casey doesn't know this yet, but I stuck in um, the Mass DOT report. I get emails. I'm not sure if everyone else gets them too, but um, we get emails from Mass DOT when they do they come out and do culvert and bridge inspections. So I've been keeping. Bridge, a, yeah, bridge. Yes, I've been keeping a file of those just oh, on, on the computer. Just whenever we get them, I stick them in a in a folder. But I just thought I would print this one. This was uh, Stockbridge uh, Road and the Mill River. This is, I think, the second time I've seen this since I've been select board, and these nuts on this thing have not been replaced yet. <laughs> so um, can, I wanted can, to get somebody out to just put those on there, you, like address like the photos that are in here. I know we can't address everything, but we can trim back some of the vegetation around the guardrail and put these nuts on here. That's all there. It's, it's just missing some nuts from the guardrail. That's all. Um, and then we'd whack back the thing um, just to protect what we do have, you know, because this looks fairly new. It is fair. It is um, new. And it was a it pain in the neck. New. And it was a pain in the neck With to 2003 replace. 2003 we replaced that, yeah. right, Carol? Yes. Yep. And yes. So, that so was a huge hassle. 2003. Those nuts were probably never It was never huge because off. you did Hobby and Stockbridge at the, right at the same time. So, we had to post a... Uh, uh, fire trucks on one side and then the other side yep. and oh yeah. my gosh. So, so I just, I don't know if So Trevor, us. if you leave a copy for Kevin, yes. um, I'll that circle. would be helpful because I haven't seen that report. Okay, I'll do that. I'll leave a copy for him and then just circle what needs to get done. It'd be good to just kind of keep it in good shape, you know, so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And, uh, so, I'll check in with um, Megan. Okay. So the culvert thing, the culvert grant, I just want to make sure you follow up on Casey and uh, Cumberland Farms. I know we mentioned it, but I just really want to make sure that's on a tickler because yep. we're running out of time. Yep. Um, is there anything else yep. you wanted to talk about uh, on your administrator's report? Um, I just wanted to let you know that we submitted, thanks to Jennifer's very hard work with Chris Curtis and Andrew Smith, we've submitted the final report for the task that we've completed in MVP 19 and 20. Now 20, most of 20 was pushed off to 21. But we went through the tasks, we went through our matches, we got the reports from Brenda and we pulled all the um, copies of the bills together and put that, sent that to Andrew after Chris looked at it. And he gave us some comments back and so we finalized the 20, the MVP 20 report this afternoon with Andrew on the phone. Um, and so we're hoping to hear affirmative from him. Um, but a lot of the work that, that we had to continue or extend into 21, we will um, work with him more on that as we progress through it, like Kelleher, Mill Village. We'll do those completions later. So um, this uh, it was, was a lot of hard work, and I have to give Chris and, and Jennifer a lot of credit for all that work they did. Thank so this you. was thank you. was <laughs> this uh, thank you very much. Was this MVP three and part of four? Yes. Okay. 
we actually had three years of open grants that we just basically closed. We were almost closed with 19. And what we completed in 20 seems small until you realize that there's a lot of work in process right now that'll be completed by October. Okay, sounds wonderful. Did you have any questions, Dave? Nope, Okay. I don't. All right, we have two. Um, I do have one other thing. Oh, sure. I was on the COVID CEO call and I wanted to alert everybody. So this CEO call is one that's hosted by MMA biweekly and it's now going to monthly. Um, when COVID started, it was a weekly call. And what the Lieutenant Governor updated us on was reopening phases and the new travel orders. Mm -hmm. So the new travel orders may have some HR impacts that I will circle back around to you about because um, the travel orders are, could, impact, could have impacts with people's vacations and any collective bargaining agreements we have. So I'm good, as soon as I get some information from the state, which is what Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Polito promised, was to send us their guidance, their HR guidance, because of course the state has a lot of unions. So they're gonna send out HR guidance so that MMA can share it with the mass managers. So when I have more information, I'll circle back around to you in case the select board needs to make any decisions about that or if we have further follow-up we have to do. But the other thing that she talked about, and she was very specific about it, we had DESI updates, and I think Darius shared most of that with you all in individual calls. Um, really, the DESI's waiting for their plans to be finalized, the plans from the districts and the schools to be finalized. I think they're all due on Friday. Um, but one of the things that she mentioned was they're continuing to evaluate the feasibility of reopening libraries and senior centers, because right now, their stance on that has been these are the most critical, there's an interaction of critical illness populations, so that's been the reasoning to not open senior centers and libraries, and I just wanted to make sure that I advise the select board that this, this physically came out of Lieutenant Governor Polito's mouth, that they are not in favor and they won't approve um, their own reopening change to include senior centers and libraries quite yet, because they want to watch the numbers and community spread and see how um, <clears throat> we end up with treatment and vaccine availability, just like they're watching with the school. Right. I, I had multiple, or I've had three conference calls on the, travel, on the travel forms, and um, we'll yeah. be able to cope with those. Um, they're, they're sending them to the Community Tracing Collaborative, and it will be able to yeah. be viewed we do not physically have to handle them as boards of health or as town hall staff. So um, it's, yeah. that was what I was really concerned about. Um, I was concerned so were we. I was not Thank getting, getting our accurate um, information, but this afternoon's conference call clarified that. I asked the question, had a discussion with Jenna Ferguson, who is, runs most of these meetings and um, calls. And so it's it's all set. So we'll be able to handle it. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. And if you get any other information, um, let me know because there's a lot there's a lot of questions flying around on the HR listserv and on the SAM listserv because we're all trying to figure out how to deal with it because we're in the middle of vacation season. I know. Well. Vacation uh, in Massachusetts. I know. Uh, supposedly, right? Yeah. Yep. Supposedly, we're going to be able to. A lot of nice places see. to go hiking. Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyway, Casey, I, as I long haven't as you had protect it. yourself from ticks. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got ticks mosquitoes. and everything else. I, you notice I didn't mention ticks or mosquitoes yet. I, I hadn't heard yeah. it yet. That's why I <laughs> forgot to bring it up. I was waiting. <laughs> I was going to see how long our meeting is. Um, <laughs> any, anyway, um, Casey, I haven't had a chance to look at this um, IT study feasibility study that's okay it's just there for your information okay because I um when I have more information or if you want to see the full report let me know because the full report's bigger and I would probably want to get it from nope. the cog and print it for you no that's all right it doesn't it's meaningless to somebody like me <laughs> but um I really want to make sure that we're uh doing as much as possible so could we put this on the agenda further on um you know, to discuss at some point. Okay, we've got some things that are coming up. I know you and I both have a cybersecurity meeting next week. 
We have a follow-up to the first cybersecurity oh. Zoom meeting we had, Carolyn. I think it's on the 6th. Yes. So it might be worthwhile to um, go through that second cybersecurity meeting and then look at this stuff. Because essentially what the feasibility report says is if we want to leverage money to the best of all the town's advantages that are in the COG and are interested in doing this, and there's quite a few of them. If we want to leverage our money best, then the best way for us to do that is to go through a process of evaluating standards that are scalable, um, using economies of scale for purchases, and being flexible in how different towns with different needs utilize um, that information and that accessibility for purchases or monitoring or however we handle it um, to meet their own needs because different towns have different needs. I mean, I watched Shelburne go through somewhere in the neighborhood of $75,000 infrastructure implementation plan because they lost one element of their, their technology system that oversaw the assessor's record. And five years ago this happened. It was massive. And so that's actually what started some of this feasibility work. But basically they said we need to be cognizant of how we're moving forward and if, if it makes sense to do it regionally, which they think it does, then let's figure out how to make a scalable, economically feasible plan for all the towns to buy into in some elemental way. Well, we're, we're sponsoring uh, cybersecurity at Homeland Security too. We're spending money on projects. So I just want to make right. sure Seriously, my eyes glaze over, so it's really tough for me to be able to be sure. But I want to make sure what we're doing in this is being complemented by what we're doing in Homeland Security because, you know, I, I put us in for the pilot project. And, um, right. and that's, that is going to move forward probably at the beginning of next year. So um, yeah. we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of as much as possible. Even though I hate this stuff, it is doesn't Rain matter. Is Rain involved we, we in that, need to do it. Carol? What? Is Rain involved in that? Yes, yes. Rain up at the pub? Yes. So she was on the meeting. So I think she's, she's representing that group yes. in this feasibility evaluation. Right. Well, we... If we, that makes you feel better. Yes, we set aside some money last year and this year, so it's accumulating, and I want to make sure that Deerfield is taking advantage of that because there is a lot of malware Absolutely. and ransomware issues out there, and I want to make sure that we're, you know, protected as much as possible. And so that was actually one of the biggest um, takeaways from their feasibility study, if you dig into it, I think it's the first few pages in, is cybersecurity is the most critical thing. And so we need to see cybersecurity as a true omnibus budget item. It's no longer a capital item and we need to fund it in that manner. That's their recommendation because if we don't and we get hacked, it's gonna cost us more money to fix the hack. And remember we were in that cybersecurity meeting and she said, the lawyer said that, I know. Um, it's going to cost more money if we don't build our infrastructure than it will if we do. Well, that's why I wanted Homeland Security to pay for our basic stuff. So anyway, whatever. Well, so we'll continue working yeah. on it. When I have more information, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I know we're coordinating on it, and I appreciate it because, like I say, I don't really, it's not my, um, I'm not really interested, except that I know it costs money and we, have, <laughs> and we have exposure. So I'm hustling the money, even though I don't really, right. I hate the stuff. Anyway, okay, moving on. Public Please. comment. Is there any public okay. comment? Okay. Is there uh, anyone? This is Chris Harris. Oh. Uh, I'm hey, fine Chris. with everything, and thank you all for your efforts oh, and, thank and you. progress. Oh. Thanks oh. for always attending, Chris. Oh, we Chris, thank it. you for always calling in. It's really nice that somebody really cares. <laughs> We feel loved. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> we do put a lot of effort into this stuff, seriously. Um, you know, like 50 or like all day. Okay, we have two unanticipated items um, that came up today. Um, we um, have had a couple complaints in town that we haven't been able to resolve. So um, 
we need to vote uh, to authorize the Board of Health and its agents to shut down um, businesses for non-compliance of use of facial coverings. So I move to authorize the Deerfield Board of Health and the Board of Health agents to close any businesses and or public accessibility activities for non-compliance with Governor Baker's Order Number 31, Appendix of COVID-19 Order 13, extended by COVID Order 21 and 30, requiring the use of facial coverings until such time as the businesses and or public accessibility activity has met compliance standards. I'll second that motion, mm -hmm. Trevor McDaniel. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. No, I just, I think everybody needs to set the right example. We are low here because of the, I mean, this is a broken record now, but please wear face masks, stay distanced, set an example for community members, set an example for our children. You know, all these kids are gonna be going back to school. We'll discuss this in a minute, but you need to be, as an adult, setting an example for the kids that this is what you do to make sure that you are doing everything you can to make sure businesses can stay open and that kids are able to go back and get educated and you know you can go get food and you can you know all kinds of things that we're you know that we are enjoying luckily a little bit more now that we're opened up that, you know you have to play by the rules or else we'll all get shut down again I, I just can't emphasize enough actions these actions wearing a mask will support safer reopenings <clears throat> going forward including the schools and it will help the schools stay open and it will help our businesses stay open our businesses need our support and our, our community needs our support by wearing masks so please wear masks so all those in favor aye trevor mcdaniel aye dave wolfram aye carolyn ness i know we sound like broken records but it seriously is important okay uh trevor this came up uh in our um emergency dispensing uh, call this morning so yes. uh, would you just like to explain why we're doing this? yes yeah, so this is a another memorandum from the Board of Health um, uh, requiring all face masks uh, to be worn um, at school um, clearly the wearing of masks is an important aspect of mitigation of the spread of virus with that in mind we must be cognizant of the need to plan for structured mask breaks frequently and safety uh, safely during the school day the following safety information is provided this is to make sure that, um, that we're voting uh, here to um, require face mask covering in all schools um, this is to support the administration and and to again make it as safe as possible for everybody um, the move uh, move to require face coverings as follow wearing masks is required for all people who bring students to and from schools during arrival and dismissal, all students are required to wear masks. Students in grade two and above will be required to wear face masks. Students in preschool, kindergarten, and grade one will be encouraged to wear face masks as appropriate for that age range. Please see, there's a link, how to uh, help your child adapt to wearing a mask. Face covering should be worn by all students when in halls and common areas, especially during any transition times, face masks are an accepted alternative. Face to, shields. Oh, face shields, sorry. Face shields are an accepted alternative for specialized populations of students who would be unable to wear a traditional face covering. All adults are required to wear face masks, face coverings at all times in the building. Uh, transportation staff are required to wear masks uh, during bus van transportation. Students will be reminded verbally and visually with signs and other nonverbal cues to not touch masks or and uh, to wash their hands frequently. Learning and following uh, through with our robust hand washing procedures are essential to the health and safety of our community members. Information will be provided to staff, students, and and students' families on proper use, removal, and washing of masks. Teachers and staff uh, will provide regular mask breaks throughout the day with proper social distancing, six feet, ideally outside when appropriate, or with open windows in learning spaces. Schools will have disposable masks available to students and staff 
and limited supply of face uh, cloth face coverings. However, <coughs> families will be expected to provide face coverings for their children. Transparent masks provide uh, the opportunity for more visual clues and are being considered for both staff and students, especially for students with social emotional delays and other special needs. Um, so I will second that, Trevor. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? No, not at all. It's very important part of the aspect, especially bringing our students back because of the fact that most of these students will be asystematic mm -hmm. and it's not really the students, it's when they go home to their parents and grandparents that this could be transferred and it's important to try to limit that as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know some people believe in herd technology, but you know, Quite frankly, being a senior citizen, I hate being that part of the herd. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is really to support our administration so that they can enforce this rule. This is, and yes, so this, this will be a- This Board and I think every other Board of Health in the district that will be doing the same right. as we are. Yeah. But this is for um, our, our schools in our town. So um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. Thank um, you. These are both items that came up today. Um, our upcoming meetings are August 12th and the 26th, September 9th and the 23rd, October 7th and the 21st, November 4th and the 18th. And Casey has taken care of the holidays. Thank you. December 2nd, 16th, and 30th. <laughs> They all fell that way, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, it was no hassle, so uh, yes, yeah. I'm all set. Um, just to let everyone know. Okay. As long as you have time to make sticky buns around yeah. the holidays, you're yeah. good. I just want to make sure you got plenty of time. Yes. Right? I know. Can I just say one more thing? Yes. yes. We have to investigate. So um, the legislature just made Juneteenth uh, an official holiday, so I'll get you more information about it. Oh. I just saw it circling on the HR listserv again. Oh, okay. Just today. Just today. All right, wonderful. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Today. So that means we'll end up having to figure out how that works into the holidays. Yeah, for budget and Because stuff if it's too. an official state holiday like Patriot's Day, then we're required to to give that time off somehow. I don't know quite what that looks like yet. Okay, we'll figure okay. that out for people, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry about that. I meant no, to that um, I will mention mosquitoes real quick. Make sure you wear bugs, bug spray and uh, watch your activity at dusk and dawn because um, we have, we've right had no mosquitoes test for anything in Deerfield. We've been extremely lucky. Kevin's been out putting dunks out and stuff. So hopefully West Nile, we've made it for the yeah. first time. This is the eighth year of our data collection and we've had no West Nile disease. Normally it pops up the first week of July. So not this year. That's good. Um, and no triple It's been dry too. Yes. I mean, we've had some down yeah. Yeah. here and there, but pretty dry, which is, you know. And please watch the ticks. Um, per Permethium um, is the thing that you can spray on your legs. There's an awful lot of um, ticks out there. And with this rain, when, it was, when, it, when it's dry, the tr ticks tend to pull back under the leaf mold and, and try to keep moist. But when we have regular rain showers, um, they come out more. So please be careful if you're out hiking in the woods. Okay. okay, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Dave Wolfram. All right, all those in favor. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. All right, thank you everyone. Thank I'm you. Ness. Have a nice evening. Thank you everyone that called in. Chris, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jonathan.